Beefy KO Prime Time. Hey, what's up, my peoples? Mgo here, the freak and geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the BSO3 KO Challenger. So here we are, and there he is. And first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging. So right up front here, Cybertron Cavaliers BSO3. You can see Prime just kind of hanging out there in the background, age of 16 plus. On the top here, we have Cybertron Cavaliers. On the bottom, we have warning don't eat anything in this box that could be very bad for you on this side we have colors on the other side we have colors on the back of the box same as the front of the box and that's basically it for the packaging then moving right along here we have bso3 and this is a knockoff upscaled slightly modified version of unique toys challenger much like they did with the uh, unique toys megatron so here he is in his robot mode and let's get in close here so we can take a look not at the prime crotch but at the prime noggin there's the prime noggin as you can see very very Nicely done head sculpt here. You got some nice metallic blue. Lots of silver going on here. But some nice details going on. Looks really, really good. Very nicely done. And moving down the body. See nice metallic blue. And nice glossy red. Got a lot of silver. You can see it's more kind of puffed out chest. This is one of the remoldings that they did on this figure. It definitely looks like he did not skip chest day, but yeah, some nice detail. You do have some new filler panels here that angle out to give his body a little bit more shape. So you can see some of the improvements that were made on this version of the mold. Got lots of detail. You got some gold in there as well. Some nice flamey goodness going on there on the forearms. Again, a lot of nice silver going on. Got the little rubber hoses or whatever these are. Again, some nice silver, some nice gold. Lots of nice, just metallic blue going on. His big old feet. His uh, toes are not hollow on this version. They had some little pieces here to uh, fill out the underside of his toes. And moving up the back. Again, some nice coloration. Got the prime booty. Very, very nicely done. Now, articulation-wise, what have we got? Well, we have upward and downward movement here on the head. You can squirrel. You can look down. Head can rotate, but the chin kind of gets in the way. You can't really do a full 360. You kind of have to... You have to finagle things around, but you can make it happen, but I wouldn't advise it. Uh, there's a lot of things are kind of colliding there. You don't want to risk messing up the paint there. Arms can do a full 360. Um, of course, if you, again, kind of move the shoulder piece out of the way. Now, one thing on my copy is that the, the shoulder, you can hear on this side, it is a ratchet. But for some reason, the ratchet stopped working on this side. I don't know. There you go. It clicked right there. I don't know, like the ratchet stopped working on this side. It still holds a pose, but the ratchet itself, for some reason, it it stopped working. I don't know what happened, but yeah. That's a thing to note. Um, the arms can move in and out on a nice ratchet. As you can see, the shoulder pads can move out of the way. You kind of angle that out to get a little bit more. You get that arm moving up a lot. Um, you do have bicep rotation if we move on down now there's one thing that annoys me about this figure that i will talk about one thing they should have fixed but they did not um of course you can see if you untab the shoulder you can get his arms in front of his chest if that's a thing you want to do you do have a bit over 90 degrees of a bend there at the elbow this elbow piece you can shift upward to kind of fill in that gap if you want to that's on a double hinge use that if you want the hands can rotate they can move upward if you needed to that's kind of an odd angle for a hand to go into but you can do it if you want um the hands themselves are articulated uh you got a hinge at the thumb here that allows it to move up and down a hinge here and a hinge here and each finger has a hinge at the base and a hinge right there and a hinge right there so you have nice posable fingers um you do have waist rotation but 
it is locked in place when you have these filler pieces in. Um, you do get these extra filler pieces. And I'll take them out just to show you what's going on here. So this is one thing, another improvement they made over the original. If you take these out, you can kind of see what goes on there. There's this big gap. There's a whole lot of nothing. Now, if you undo that, now you have your waist rotation. And you even get an ab crunch here. The ab crunch is unaffected by these pieces, but the rotation is. So that's up to you. There is a trade-off to using these, but it's up to you if you want to use them. Now... This piece, little crotch piece here, can move up and down. These pieces can move in and out. Legs can move forward that far. You can do the big boot back about that far. Um, outward, you can do only about that far because this piece kind of gets in the way, starts colliding. You can get out that far. You do have thigh rotation. You have 90 degrees of bend at the knee. And the feet, uh, the toes can move up. They have ankle tiltage, and this is one thing I wish they had fixed with this version of the mold. On the original Challenger, these toes are on a hinge, and if this hinge is slightly loose, um, he just wants to fall forward because these don't really do too well with uh, bearing weights. Um, and I wish they had improved this this uh, this bit of the figure by having these toes just lock in somewhere, have it tab in somewhere. There could have been like a tab slot connection maybe right here, or you have this tab right here. Maybe they could have just like filled this in, put a slot there, so this could just tab in right there and lock those toes into place. Because this figure does have the same problem as the original, like if you're kind of messing around with them, those toes go and whoop, he wants to fall forward. So that's an improvement I wish they had done to this mold, but unfortunately they didn't. But there you go. So let's talk about these waist pieces a little more here. So here are the waist filler pieces. You can see, just done in silver. Now there is a dedicated left and right, and you can tell because the tabs are two different sizes. So that right there tells you which side goes where. Uh, you want the uh, rounded part facing forward, and you want the hollow part facing down. So that's how they're oriented. And... Um, the easiest way is just kind of pop all this up, kind of engage the uh, the uh, ab crunch, and they will just tab into the sides. Oh, it helps also if you uh, shift his hips down, so you have some extra room here. And I'll just tab in. Again, you know, different size tabs there, so you know which side goes where. And they just tab in like so. They just close it all back up. And there you go. And you can see it does fill in that waist quite nicely so you don't have that weird gap going on in there. And again, the trade-off is you, you, you kind of lose the, uh, the waist rotation because it does kind of lock that. So as a trade-off, so totally up to you if you want to use them or not. Still, nice inclusion nonetheless. Now, as far as accessories go, uh, you do get quite a bit of stuff here with Prime. Um, of course, we do get his mighty sword here. We'll get in close so you can take a look at the details. You can see the blade done in nice silver. Some nice detail going on there. You got the nice red, the metallic blue. Looks quite, quite good. And here it is with uh, Challenger's sword. You can see it's a bit bigger. And you can see Challenger's sword is done in more of a gunmetal gray, whereas on the KO version, it's done in a Nice bright silver, and even the uh, the blues and the reds are much more vibrant. So, you have that. You do also get his shield. Which again, lots of nice silver. You get the flamey goodness there. Some gold. Looks quite good. And again, just to compare it with the original Challenger's shield. You can see... Definitely some different molding going on here. You can see how that works out. The shield itself does have that element of transformation. You can pull these sides out like so, and these bits here will also flare out like that. And then you can take the gun, it's on a slider, and you just slide the gun out like so. So you can have a little blaster, the shield blaster deal going on there. So things you can do if you want to do it. And all that just compresses back up like so. So you get that. Uh, you do also get the staff, the magical staff here. 
and just done all in silver. Lots of nice detail going on there. Of course, you have two points here that you can hold on to. Uh, mine's, you can see a little, <laughs> a little warped out of the box, but I can fix that. Just heat that up with a hair dryer. I can get that back in shape. You can see you have some Cybertronian symbols going down the handle there. So, nice stuff. And you do get the hand blade. Again, done in a very nice silver. You get a little clip here for the sword. We'll show off how this works in a little bit. And one more weapon. You get a big old gun here. Again, lots of detail, lots of nice silver. Red, the metallic blue. Some nice gold. Looks quite, quite good. The gun itself does have a light-up feature. The battery compartment is right in here. It takes uh, two LR41 batteries, which um, are included. All the batteries for this figure, at least on mine, were all included and already installed. But if they're not, if you don't get the batteries with this, if you buy it, um, it takes LR41s for everything. So you have a button right under here, and you push it, and whoop, it's a nice bright blue LED goes off in there. So, you get that. And you also get one more accessory, which is an alternate head sculpt. And this is an unmasked head sculpt. Which again, very nicely detailed and some lovely paintwork. So that is everything you get with this guy. Now, as far as using all of this stuff, um, if you want to give him the little uh, hand blade here, it just tabs into the slot right here. Give it a little squeeze, and there you go. You can poke, 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 and all that good pokey pokies. Or you can take his shield here, and that will just plug into his forearm, like so. And again, this is what I'm talking about with those toes. I wish they locked in, but there you go. There he is with his shield. And, of course, you can wield his mighty sword. as the typical tab in the slot of the palm method of weapon holding. And he just wraps his fingers around that. And he holds it quite securely again. Stab, stab, pew, pew. Stab, stab, pew, pew. And all that good stuff. And again, I wish those toes locked. I wish those toes locked. But you got that going on. Now, as far as storage goes, you have options. And as always, options are good. But uh, you can store the sword by itself on his back. If you just use this clip here. Just put the sword through it. And that can just peg right onto his back, like so. Or, if you want to store the shield, that can store right back there as well, and then you can take this, and this will peg into the shield, and you can just have all of that stored on his back. Hey, things you can do if you want to do it. And of course he can hold the gun, he can hold the staff, so he can pew pew magic magic, pew pew magic magic, and all of that good stuff. And one last thing is the light up feature. His eyes do light up. Oh, the battery compartment is right back here. If I can get it off. There we go. You can see the back of his head is just held on by three magnets. And there are your batteries. Again, takes two LR41s. They were already included and installed with mine, but if they're not with yours, again, two LR41s. So you just pop that back on. You push the button on top of his head and whoop, his eyes glow. A nice bright blue. So again, things you can do if you want to do it. And the uh, the alternate head sculpt does have the light up feature as well. Push the button. Oops, there we go. And the eyes glow that nice bright blue. Now to swap the heads, it's very easy. Just a screw under the neck here. You just undo the screw, swap the heads, screw it back in, and you can have faceplate or no faceplate, that is the question. Two faceplates or not two faceplates? So there you have that, and now for comparison. Here he is with the original uh, Unique Toys, Megatron. Here he is with the knockoff, Unique Toys Megatron, so you can see how they look side by side. They do look quite good together. And here he is with the uh, Toy World 
Prime, and for the record, you're not going to see him in truck mode because I refuse to transform this thing, but <laughs> you can see how they scale with each other. And lastly, but not leastly, here he is with the original Unique Toys Challenger. So as you can see, he's a bit bigger on the colors, are definitely much more vibrant on the knockoff version. Um, there is some, you know, extra paint apps, there is some remolding, you got a whole new remolded chest here. Um, you also have, like I said, these new um, filler pieces here. On the side, just kind of fill things in. Even this piece is now filled in and painted over. So you don't have, you know, some hollow bits hanging out there. Of course, you have the waste filler pieces, so you don't have that kind of weird gap going on in there. Um, but yeah, overall, it is definitely uh, an improvement over the original mold. Um, like I said quite a few times, I wish they had done something about his feet to make his toes lock, but other than that, um, definitely uh, a vast improvement in my opinion over what is already a really good figure as far as I'm concerned. So, there you go. So that is basically it for the robot mode, so let's get down to a transformation, shall we? Let's. So, first thing we need to do is we actually need to uh, remove these uh, waste filler pieces. What parts for me? Shh. Shh. It's okay. It's okay. You don't have to use this if you don't want to. You don't have to if you don't want to. This is totally optional. Totally an optional thing. Options. Good. Remember? They're good. But anyway, take out the waste pieces. Put those off to the side. And now we can commence. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the hands and rotate them so the palm is facing forward. Bring the hand up. Just kind of curl those fingers around his forearm like that. And once you have done that, he's going to tilt around so much because his toes won't lock in. Anyway, why didn't they fix that? Why didn't they? I'm sorry. I know I'm kind of harping on that, but it's just, what they, you know, they could have, they could have. Anyway, uh, you want to undo this forearm piece right here, the back of the forearm. Just lift this up so you can then rotate the forearm around. Uh, this section right here will just slide out like so, and it will tab in right there, like that. You want to make sure you have the elbow completely locked into place. Just push that up, and it will, you'll get a hearty, uh, a hearty thoop right there, so you want to make sure that arm is completely straight. Once you've done that, we need to come up to the shoulder region, and you're going to take the shoulder pad here, just rotate it forward like that, and then rotate the arm 180 at the bicep, and hit the shoulder the uh, shoulder, the elbow piece, and just raise that up like that. So second verse is, guess what, just like the first. So we are just going to be rotating the hand, bringing it up, and undoing this, rotate out, pull this little section out, and tab it all in, like so. And again, just make sure that the arm is completely locked and thooped into place. Rotate that shoulder piece forward, rotate the arm at the bicep, and then bring up that elbow piece. And you got that done. Uh, we'll come back here right now and just flip these bits out, the bottoms of the uh, smokestacks. They just rotate out like that. We now want to open up his chest. These sections right here, just tab right in. He's tabbed in very securely, a little too securely. And I just cut my nails, so I, I lost my natural prying tools here. There we go. Get in there, there we go, that one came undone. He's here, so undo the chest pieces here, and then you want to pull up on that whole head and neck panel. That will free this up, and you can bring this down. Once you've done that, you can just pull all of this out. And extend all this out. Pull all this out. And extend all of this out. You can see the little filler panels here. You just want to actually come down a lot further. Just push those in like that. Just push that in. So now, let's come back here. Make sure these panels are all the way pulled out. So what you're going to do here is you're going to rotate the arm inward like so, and then just kind of take this and swing it all down and around. And 
and swing it all down and around like that. And you just bring this in and you have a tab and a slot right in there. So make sure that stays plugged in like that. And then you can take the windshield and just swing it over. That will sit right there. Take the shoulder pad and that will just tuck in right in there like so. And there you have that side all done. So second verse, guess what, is just like the first. So again, make sure you have all this straightened out. Bring your arm back and then just swing. Helps if you bring the shoulder pad out also. Swing all this around, whoop, like that. And that should tab in, swing that around. And then swing the windshield down. And there we go. So we got that going on. So now we can bring this section up. You have these side bits here, which are just going to come out on these double hinges. Like so. Then you can just drop the head down. You kind of angle it back a little bit also. You're also just going to whoop, swing to the back like so. Bring that up, get that out of your way. And you're just going to bring the two halves together. And you have tabs right here, which will go into these slots right here. These can be a little bit of a pain in the bootocks to get in, but it is totally, totally doable. Just gonna get that around. And get that lined up, get that into place. And there we go. They can pick all this together, pick all this together. This does come together a lot better than the original version. On the original version, I always had this big gap right here that I could never get closed up. So I'm very happy that this comes together a lot more solidly. Another little improvement they made there. And then these shoulder pad pieces just get pushed in like that. And we have most of the cab ready to go. So now we can work on the legular region. So we're gonna come down here and work on the legulars. So what we're going to do with the legulars is uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're going to take this whole waist connection here and unlock it like that. You're gonna take the legs and you're gonna bring the hips down so you can then swing the legs up. Swing the legs up. Just gonna turn things around here. And then you're just going to shift the hips downward like that. Make sure that these kind of sit in those grooves. There we go. So now we can get the legs all transformed up. So undo this panel and then you want to untab this panel here that will allow all this to swing out. Now I can lie them down while we are doing the rest of this. So now we're going to just extend all of this, then extend everything else. This front grill section here, just kind of raise it up a little bit so you can rotate it up and then flip it up like that. Then rotate this whole assembly 180, flip the toes up all the way, and then this will just rotate down like so. This will swing around, come down, and tab in right there like so. You got a little panel in here, just bring that out like that. Another thing you want to do, you have this new little panel right here also. You just want to take this out, it's on a ball joint, just bring it out and then just rotate it down like that. That's going to sit there and then this little panel will just flip under like so. So we got that side done, second bus, guess what, just like the first. So. Undo that panel and undo this panel. Make a swing all that out. Swing that all out. Extend everything like so. And again, just bring that grill up, rotate, bring it up. 180, flip up the toe, swing all of this down. Make sure that is sitting in the right place. There we go, like that. Then swing this forward, bring it down, plug it in, plug it in, 
flip out this panel, come here, take this new little section here, bring that out, swing it around, and there you go. So now that we've done that, now we can oops, also put the panel in. So now we can bring the legs together and bump the camera in the process. You know how this works. There we go. The legs will tab together and then these skirt pieces will come up like that. So get all that together. Make sure your knees are straightened down also. There we go. Like that. And then all of this will swing around. You have a tab that will go into a slot right in here. And you have multiple locking points here. So just get everything lined up. As best you can. And get the other side. Spin that forward. Gotta make sure everything stays together. Oops. There we go. Come forward. Make sure I'll tab in. Tab in. And make sure these little silver pieces sit under these grooves in here. So we should get everything lined up just right. There you go. Then you just peg all that together. Get it all nice and scrozen, which it is. This actually fought me a bit when I was shooting the JTI, but of course now it wants to cooperate. Thank you, at least for cooperating once on camera. And there we go. So now that we have done that, last thing we need to do is just bring this down and just take this section here, pull it out, swing that up. And you have these two tabs right here, which will go into slots right behind here. So just line that up. And they should basically just locate themselves. There we go. Which it did. And there you go. There you have Challenger in his alt. No, you kind of spin them. Not really. You know, rubber tires. You know how it is. There we go. Oops, get everything a little bit more. There we go. Get everything in the right place. Get everything nice and squozen. There you go. There he is in his alt mode. And looking good. Looking good. Looking nice. And probably, oops, still didn't have things properly squozen. There we go. You want things sitting flush there. But yeah, looking good. Nice and primey, nice and flamey. Very good, very, very good. Let's get in close here, so we can take a look at the details again, make sure everything's scrozen, scrozen. You see all that nice silver right up front there. You get some transparent plastic here for those headlights. You get some nice bits of silver. You got some tinted transparent plastic there for the windshields and windows. Again, lots of silver. Lots of flames. It's all around lots of stuff. But nicely done. Nice detail. Those lights back there. Picked out in paint. We do have some nice beefy rubber tires on this. And there is the top. There is the bottom. He does roll as rolling things should. Hooray. Hooray for rolling. Although it is a little bit impeded. Because his hips, his hips are a new mold. They made his hips a little bit, uh, a little bit chunkier, so they do kind of hang down a little more than they do on the original. So sometimes you just kind of try to get things as squozen as possible. Kind of see sometimes. I mean, like sometimes the wheels, these back wheels will hook up. Sometimes they're not. And again, that could just be how I'm having things placed in here. But yeah, it seems like because they gave him beefier thighs. It can impede the rolling a little bit. You kind of see now, like I'm, you know, like now those back wheels are starting to hook up. So and it still feels like something's scraping. So that's one thing. Some of the remolding I think made for some clearance issues with the uh, with the truck mode. So yeah, that's a thing. 
that's that that's a thing. And for comparison, uh, here he is with the original unique toys challenger. So you can see how that works out again on the knockoff version. The colors a lot more vibrant. Um, and again, on mine, this could never stay together. This stays together a lot better. Although I end up with a gap here. You stay. There we go. Now it stays together. Just have to give it a little squeeze every now and then. But you can see. I'll give you the turnaround here. So you can see who's who, what's what, where's how, and how's why. Just got to see what they did here with this version of the mold. But, yeah. Again, very nicely done. Again, not perfect. It is a knockoff, so, you know, it suffers from some of the, uh, the downfalls of being a knockoff. And you have to reverse engineer things, but all in all, though does look quite good so there you go now as far as uh storage for the accessories of course you can take the stuff you can you know plug it back here there's your storage hooray for storage um now one thing that royally royally bugs me is that these uh these these waste filler pieces um now, granted, the instructions don't even acknowledge that these exist, so they don't tell you how to store them, but it seems like there was a perfect place to store them, and it just doesn't quite work. You can see, I don't know if you can see, there are slots right in here, and these are like the perfect places to store these because you can literally just um, tab them in. Oops, if I could hold on to them, you could tab them in right there. And look, that's like the perfect place for them. And they don't get in the way of anything, but they don't hold in. And that sucks. And that just seems like the perfect place to store these. Perfect. But that slot just isn't uh, narrow enough. Um, so that's unfortunate. One thing I did find is if you open these up, you can... I forget how I did this, but I just kind of tucked them in here. I forget. There we go. You just tuck them in like that. I believe that's how I had them. And they would stay in. I, I did it a specific way and I don't remember how I did it. <laughs> but I just had them just kind of tucked in here like that. And that works. They'll stay in. You know, it's a place to put them if you want to put them somewhere. Hey, storage if you want storage. But again, I think the perfect place would have been right there in those these empty spots right here. If those grooves had just been a little bit more narrow, you could actually plug them in. But it is what it is. But there you go. So there you have a BSO3, and uh, for a knockoff, it's a nicely done knockoff. You know, it does make some improvements over the original mold. Um, there's still some things I wish they would have improved. So, I mean, still, still some tweaking that could have been done with this figure, but overall, they made some nice improvements to it. Brighter colors, extra paint apps, they did remold some parts, um, you know, overall some nice improvements here. Uh, you know, again, like I said, you know, some things still could have been tweaked, but overall, uh, a nicely done figure, so. There you go! Now I picked this up from TF Safari. I'll put a link to their site in the description down below so you can check that out. Of course, for all your other Transformers needs, you can always check out BigBadToyStore.com. Linked in the description down below so you can check that out as well. You can also check out my Knockoff Transformers playlist for any reviews you may have missed. Also linked in the description down below so you can check that out as well. And I think that's it, so don't forget to check out M Games, check out Love Peace Paranormal, follow me on Twitter, all of that good stuff down in the description below, and I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So, there is the BSO3 KO Challenger, and this is MGO saying, remember, you don't stop playing because you grow old, you grow old because you stop playing. Be a geek, be proud, boom in your face. All right, Megatron. One shall stand, one shall collapse. Why throw away your life so- wait, wait, what? Why are you saying it like that? You don't say it like that. No, I just thought I'd try something new. Yeah, no, no, that just sounded horrible. Not feeling it? No, that's a total failed experiment there. Oh, I thought it had a nice ring to it. No, no ring, no ring whatsoever. All right, fine. One shall stand, one shall fall. There it is!